All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, wow. Welcome to Sunday. I can't believe it. It's day seven of the Bay Area Craft Week. How did we make our way all the way to this point? <laughs> We've been having a great time stumbling along, meeting great new people, having fantastic stories shared over the internet in all kinds of ways. I um, want to thank everybody for joining us today, especially the people who are coming into this conversation um, by way of Zoom and joining the call. Thanks, everybody, for being in the room with us. Um, my name is Scott Pollock. I'm the Senior Director of Public Programs and Engagement at the American Craft Council, and I'm joined today with my colleague, Lindsay Noble, who's our Engagement Manager. And of course, we're here with the incredible Jenny Fong from Modern Shaburi, and we're super excited to jump into this conversation and see your space. Thanks so much for doing this, Jenny. Um, want to just give everybody a couple couple of heads up reminders before we go ahead and get started. I think we have about probably around 60 minutes together and I know some people are coming to this call this morning live and some people will probably be retrieving it on the internet um, later on. So wherever you're coming into this call, thank you again for joining us. Um, if you're playing around live right now and you're in the room with us, you can always um, move your cursor um, over Jenny's little picture, her little frame there, and two, three little dots are going to pop up on the right-hand corner there, and click that, and once Jenny gets rolling here, it's always fun to pin her camera, because uh, it's nice, it sort of gives you a better view of what she's she's sharing with us today, so just a little tip there, a little pro tip for this Zoom meeting. The other thing we'll be doing is if people have calls or questions on this call, um, feel free to use the chat function. I think that seems to be the easiest way. And of course you could follow along. I'm sure between Lindsay I, um, and, and myself, we'll all be posting in the chat room. And that little feature, if again, if you scroll your mouse around the screen here, you'll see a little icon with the, the chat uh, pops up. And we'll go ahead and post all sorts of different fun things on there. But if you want to be a part of the conversation, throw a question down there. And then between Lindsay and I, we'll probably um, uh, not to interrupt you, Jenny, because uh, we mm -hmm. want you to have your time and space. But we'll try to try to ping people and get people's questions answered throughout the next hour. Um, and, you know, at the end, after after Jenny's had a chance to take us uh, for a little zing and zoom around her studio and space, we'll probably open it up to questions and answers. And people, everybody, again, on this call, feel free to um, to, to unlock yourself, uh, bring yourself into the picture view if you'd like, and, and then you can play around the mute button. But for now, I um, want to again welcome everybody to day seven. I can't, again, can't believe that it's, it's, we're coming to the end of Craft Week, our first and um, debut pilot project of what we felt like we could do during this this pandemic stay at home order in replacement of the physical American craft shows um, that the American Craft Council has been hosting for almost three decades now. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, we have, we have so much to learn about. We are so grateful for the creative communities in the Bay Area who've stepped up and helped us make this possible. Um, one of the things we've been doing to try and connect our varied audiences from coast to coast to the Bay Area Craft Week is a small little project called Street Scenes. And we just asked a number of Bay Area creatives to sort of give us a day in the life of what life is like out in that neck of the woods. And we're really indebted to have this one come to us today from Outer Sunset, the team at uh, the wood shop, particularly Jeff Can, who was a woodworker, um, our sign maker too. And he put together this little post that lifts up um, um, that part of, the, of San Francisco. And we are hoping, Jenny, and I'm very curious about what the weather is like today. I know last year when I was out, I stayed in Outer Sunset and just felt like this sense of fog. But one of the things that Jeff does in this post, he invites us to, to to walk up to the top of the hill there and get a 360 degree view and boy oh boy if there's um, you know this has been quite uh, that, that wild year that 2020 where it's been hard to figure out what 360 degrees looks like right now in so many different ways so anyhow it's a nice metaphorical post it's incredible to see and connect with a lot of different makers communities across the bay area using that so if you're in again in the call here i just posted the link to today's street scenes and then um, after this call, if you want to go ahead and, and, and get inspired by what artists are listening to, today's artist playlist comes from um, a ceramicist, Ian Petrie, who's in actually has a small collection in the show. Um, you could click on the Ian's um, um, what feels like a progressive rock and pickup music here for the rest of the day. But anyway, I just wanted to post that and draw attention to him. Um, serendipitously, these are the wild things in our, our world when we, we bring craft into our lives. Here I am. I grabbed coffee this, this morning with an Ian Petrie mug. Totally not intended, but there it was, the playlist dropped and it was like, where am I? So 
you makers, again, thank you for doing everything you do to, to center craft in our everyday lives. And we're really excited to, to have you with us today, Jenny. But um, if you want, go ahead, join the conversation. You can carry, post pictures, put them all up online. We'll put together a little hashtag where all of that lives. But um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the microphone, space, frame, whatever you call it these days, over to my colleague, Lindsay Novo. And you can go ahead and take it away from here, Lindsay. Thanks for putting this together. Really appreciate that. Welcome, everyone. We're super excited to have everyone here um, and excited to introduce our seventh Maker Meetup host. I can't believe it's already been seven at this point. Jenny Fong of Modern Shibori. Um, inspired by minimalist design and traditional Japanese Shibori techniques, Jenny makes her effortless pieces to exacting standards. Modern Shibori is her California-based eco fashion brand where she uh, uses luscious handmade botanical dyes for organic cotton, linen, and hemp silhouettes. Jenny, your work is obviously beautiful and I think you have a huge fan base here. And we as ACC are lucky to call you a regular American craft show exhibitor. Um, Jenny is exhibitor in person, national show since 2016, I believe, Jenny, mm -hmm. when you yeah. started in our emerging artist program, formerly known yeah. as hip hop. Um, so it's been rewarding me personally, since I've worked closely with you to watch your career explode and progress throughout the years since 2016. So I just want to say with that, welcome and thanks for joining us today. And I'll let you take it from here. Great. Thanks so much, Lindsay and Scott and ATC for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you everyone for joining today on Sunday, sharing a little bit of your Sunday with me. Um, I'm super, super excited to show you uh, some a mood board that I've been working on. Um, this is one of those, those things that I've always wanted to do, but since I was traveling for shows back when we were traveling, I never really had a chance to actually put together a mood board. So. Um, now that I've been home, I finally have, and I'm super excited because it just sets direction for colors that I'm thinking about, um, inspiration, and it actually really influences directly some of the clothes that you'll see. So um, I'm just going to walk you really quickly through the board. Um, and let's see, just talk about botanical dyes. So um, first of all, this is uh, in my studio, and um, I've been working a lot on these teal colors. Um, this teal it actually comes from layering several different botanical dyes. So I'll start out with um, a yellow base like pomegranate and then I'll tie it and then remordant it so it becomes a little bit darker. Um, and then I'm also really loving this, um, these yellows and greens. I think they're really super fresh. This is a necklace from Lingua Nigra. Everyone knows Alicia. She's uh, got some great colors in her line too. So I really love the way everything is working here. Um, and then I'm also loving, this is a, basically it's a, it's a cloth that this artist Sifa Boma has done and it's natural dyed in pomegranate. And then he takes another dip into indigo to create this really beautiful um, green. And I love how it just, you get this different layers and effects, gradients of color. I think that's one of the most beautiful parts about uh, botanical dyes. And then over here, this is this um, an artist who's watercolorist and her name is Olivia Joy Studio. Um, so it's influencing sort of the murkiness of the grays and then some of the kind of nice caramel colors up there too. Um, then here, this is actually a bougainvillea leaf from my garden and I was really trying to get this really beautiful fuchsia. So I got this by using um, a dye called lac. Um, and then just down over here, there's a really great natural dyer named um, Sasha Dewar. She's based in Oakland and she's written several books on natural dyes. She's one of my natural dye heroes. And um, she's dyed this with kutch, um, varying, varying parts of walnut, a little bit of dip into iron to get those darks and, and beautiful grays. Um, then over here, uh, this is Dries Van Noten, and this is Story Manufacturing, and then up in the corner is, of course, Issa Miyake. I just love everything about Issa's line, of course. Um, so then coming down here, this is where I've been playing with um, these caramel colors. So my line really started out um, with a lot of indigo, and I'm just starting to um, experiment with all these different colors. So uh, let's see. Jenny, can, so, you, can you can you remind uh -huh. me who is the um, who is the Bay Area um, uh, natural plant dyer you mentioned you just referenced there? Oh, Sasha Dewar. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. Incredible. She's yep. written several several books, and I think she's definitely taught in the Bay Area as well. Um, yeah, so basically this is a teal color that I was working on. And this is um, what's really interesting about these fabrics, and which is the reason why I love working with natural fibers, is that each fabric actually gives um, the same dye different colors because each fabric has a different base that it starts with. So these are all, these are all white, but they um, all reflect the color differently. So these were dyed in pomegranate first and then dyed with indigo. And the cotton is a little bit lighter. The linen took it darker and the silk actually went more yellow, which is really interesting. Um, and then over here, this is just some, a little mini mood board of some things that came out of the vat. And, um, you know, it's something that I love. It's just sort of like you start to experiment and the more you experiment, if you have accidents, it's always good to save everything because you never know when it might appear on your board again <laughs> at some point. So, um, so those are colors that I'm loving. This is brand new as well. Um, this is silk. And this is an experiment I did with um, myrobalin, which is a tree. And then I took it into the bronze tones with a little bit of iron and a little bit of indigo as well. So you'll see this color too. Um, so, well, I will zip over here. And I just wanted to talk about um, a little bit about life during pandemic. Um, so the last time I actually saw Lindsay and Scott in person was we we're running through the, the aisles of ACC Baltimore. And um, but after the, right after that, everything shut down because of the pandemic. But what was really, what's really important, I think, for creative people is to be very resilient and to adapt. So that's why I feel like um, I feel like my work and my product has really shifted into a new direction, in a great direction because of the pandemic. So um, I'm going to show you some things that I've been working on over here. And um, let's see. So I've got this is basically dyed with rosemary, and it is a really beautiful kind of silvery gray tone. Um, I'll show you some of my natural dyes here. So obviously rosemary. And what I do is I actually um, take this rosemary, uh, dry it, because when you dry it, it actually releases more of the dye, and then create a bundle with this garment. So I start with a finished garment. Um, these are all my designs. I wrap it up, and then I put into the dye, into the tea, and it actually comes out with this really beautiful different tones of light gray. Um, and this is a smock. It's one of my most, my best selling um, silhouettes. It's basically like a very large shirt. Um, the one I'm wearing is actually matter root. And then I tied it again and dyed it with indigo. Um, let's see. And I wanted to show you also, this is some, another bit of natural dye. This is actually walnut. So I use walnut in a lot of my pieces. This is a walnut piece. Um, and walnut is just like this gorgeous color. It's just, you know, slight variations, which is part of the beauty. You can see these striations here that just come out. And that's why no two pieces are the same. Um, and I put a little, in the back pleat, I put a little bit of sashiko embroidery, just a little hit. And uh, sometimes I'll do a little touch right here in the collar too. It's kind of like my little signature. Um, hey Jenny, I have a question or uh -huh. someone asked a question. Um, they submitted this early, but they're kind of asking about um, how like the process of making each piece. Like, do you make things one at a time um, or in quantity? And if quantity, do you have any production streamlining tips to share? Um, yeah. So that's one of the things that I really had to learn um, as I was starting out is, you know, um, you want to follow your ideas down a certain path. Um, and give yourself freedom to do that. But then also you may, you may have a few orders in the pipeline. So what I end up doing is um, I will design the, fa the garment with the fabric. Um, I will make the garment or I will actually have someone help me sewing. Um, then I'll have a stack of these garments. Um, when I get an order in or, or like five orders in, um, I'll tie and dye everything that's gonna go into one batch of color. So I'll have a stack, I'll spend like one day kind of you know, tying and dyeing everything. And then I'll spend the next two days maybe or so um, actually making the dyes and dyeing everything. So um, it just, it really helps out that way to kind of, yeah. I, I guess um, 
there's this one guy here called Jack Dorsey. You've probably heard of him. He's the CEO of Twitter. And he has a great method. He basically spends um, just one day on one type of thing. So one day is product, where he actually works on product. Another day, maybe uh, management. And another day, maybe something else, you know? So I really follow that because it helps to kind of um, cut down with the con con context switching uh, and just makes it a bit more sane for myself. So yeah, that's how I got together. Well, thank you, Jenny. Sure. Um, and then let's see, the other thing I have too is, this is, this is actually an evolution. So this is Walnut here, um, it's on, a double gauze that's cotton, it's got certified cotton, it's super, super soft. And then I took that walnut one and just tied it again and overtied it with indigo. So this is just a nice, a very lovely, um, kind of a khaki color with blue. And I have these linen scarves too. So this is a really beautiful gauzy linen scarf. This is super, super versatile. So what I like to do is um, you can actually wear it as a head wrap, so I can show you how to do that. It's really simple. You just put it at your forehead like this. You know, it looks funny in the beginning, but... And then you take it to the back, cross the back over, take it up to the front, and actually, um, and then, you know, just turn it, cross it in the front, tuck your ends in, and then tie it in the back. And I actually wore this, it was, super hot here to or here uh, last week and I wore my hair up like this and it felt really, really good. You can just tuck your, your ends in if you want to. Um, that's a really fun take on a quick little turban. Um, yeah, and then also the other ways you can wear it is just like, uh, like this. You can even tie the ends and it's, it becomes an infinity scarf. You can um, actually make it into a little, kind of like a loose tie, like a men's tie. So one end shorter, one end longer, and you just wrap it around like this twice. And then pull the end through the top like this, and then down through the, the knot you just made. And what I love about this is it just keeps all the, the, um, all the warmth right in the front. And then if it actually starts to get rainy or foggy, which it does here, you can actually pull this, um, Take one of the ends and pull it up like a little hood just to kind of <laughs> keep yourself, you know, a little protected. It feels really good, actually. Um, so I love this scarf. It's, a, it's like the perfect width and perfect length. We have another question from, from Barb Fritz, actually. Um, and she's uh -huh. wondering where you get your beautiful linen fabrics. Oh, um, there is a great supplier here in San Francisco called um, Pickering. And they have a really nice selection of GOTS certified linen fabrics. Um, and then this is one of my best selling dresses. Um, so basically, this is a cocoon style dress, and I'm going to do a quick change. Uh, I am wearing clothes underneath my smock, don't worry. <laughs> um, but let's see. So I love this dress. Let's see here because you can wear it so many different ways. And um, this is this teal color that I've been going for and um, that you saw in the swatches. And it's just a gorgeous color. Um, I think it's a great move on from indigo blue, which I've been working with the indigo for about, um, you know, let's see, six years. So it's kind of fun to just mix it up a little bit. Um, so you can't see the bottom, but it's a little cocoon shape and it goes down to about three quarters. And if you're, you know, doing your Zoom calls with your friends, you can style it with a little casual necklace like this. Um, I can't get the class, but there's my Zoom, my Zoom frame. <laughs> so you can see how it looks. It's nice and casual that way. Um, and then you can also pair it with this really pretty, the bronze scarf, or I've also got this yellow, yellow green scarf that just came through. And this, this, I'm super excited about these colors too. So I wear it like this. 
Um, and this is a great transitional dress because, you know, we're going from late summer into fall. So you can also, if you're, you know, at a meeting or something like that, um, just wear a, a really quick little blazer, throw it on like this, you know, then you're all dressed up. This is my Zoom frame again. <laughs> yeah, I love that. What is, okay, I got to see those two quick. We got to mute. <laughs> Share screen. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a comment on there, Jenny, where you can flip it onto our screen. But this is great. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's just, you know, we're all kind of trying to survive during pandemic. And it's just good to kind of figure out what's going to work. And this is just like super comfortable dress. Um, and, you know, I, I just love the versatility of it, too, because you can dress it up and dress it down. Um, yeah definitely getting me inspired for for fall fashion and I'm curious because we haven't lived through this 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 uh, zoom world <laughs> yeah. in a fall yeah. yet so I'm trying to figure out how does that transition work what does the what does the scarf look like in the yeah on the call yeah. these are great yep yeah exactly so we really only have to worry about everything from here up <laughs> so then you know you transition from your your work meeting you take your scarf off and then maybe you've got like a little family birthday dinner. So then you're like, oh, I want to be a little dressed up. Or maybe it's like Thanksgiving. I, I do call this my ultimate Thanksgiving dress. So then you just put on, throw on a little statement necklace like this. You know, maybe some nice earrings. I got these earrings here. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, just kind of run through your vintage bunch of jewelry and, and earrings and scarves and uh, pull them out. <laughs> you know, I think it's really, it's time to have fun. Here we go. There's that frame again. I love <laughs> this, Lindsay. I love this. These have been, the maker meetups have just been also diverse in terms of ways <laughs> artists present themselves, Jenny. And this is like so suitable. I, I You're giving us this, you know, the, always the great experience you give us at the <laughs> So by walking into a 10 by 10 space. It's so hard not to want to try this stuff on or feel it or pick it up. So I know. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I was watching this um, Sam, the jeweler, the fine jeweler's um, meet, meet her makeup. And yeah, I just, his jewelry was so gorgeous and I wanted to try everything on, but I couldn't. <laughs> so um, I am going to change, change into this other one. This is a really great, super, I'm super excited about this fabric. It's um, cotton flannel. And it's perfect for fall, winter. So quick change. Okay, so this one's really great because this is actually dyed with walnut. And um, I just think that the walnut hull is just such a gorgeous color. It's, it's a neutral, it's beautiful, it's a comforting color, it's luscious. You know, this is kind of, it's almost, this is a cotton flannel that's got certified, so it's almost like a moleskin or velvet. It's just really lovely, lofty. Okay, so then here's this. So then this smock, it really changes character when it's in a different fabric. Um, it just, you know, especially I think in the um, flannel, it just, it's like, a, like I said, it's comforting. It's like a cup of hot chocolate, you know? Um, and I can really see wearing this during the winter. So here we go. This is, you know, you can open the neck. Um, nice and casual. A little bit Fred Flintstone in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, really fun. And then, um, you know, just really a really quick change out. If you wanted to, you could wear a scarf instead. So take the necklace off and then, you know, style it with the scarf. Um, you can wear the scarf as a shawl if you wanted to, too. I love how this is getting me excited to actually care about dressing again. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and again, trying to hear up. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. And then also this mock, you can actually wear it open as well, like a little jacket. And you can't really see, but there is that um, pleat in the back, uh, it just kind of nips it in and gives it some shape as well. So, and then if it gets colder, you know, I've got the long sleeves on, you can actually unroll it. So it actually looks like a kimono sleeve too. Just like this. So yeah, I'm gonna live in this all winter long, pretty much. 
Um, and then I've got a selection of linen scarves, you know, in just different colors. So this will be a new color too, that um, the same color that you saw on the mood board as well. Um, and then, whoops, this came out of the vat. So this is a fuchsia one that I'm super excited about. Um, again, you saw this color on the mood board. You can do a little Fred Flintstone necklace, which is pretty fun. Um, and you can pair it with another linen scarf. It's got a little bit of indigo on there. Grab a little water here. Um, and then the last piece I have is called, I call this the day into night shirt, because basically you can wear it during the day and it's a night shirt. Um, it's really super soft. It's organic cotton. The cotton is actually grown in South Carolina and then also then milled in Texas. So this is completely made in the USA. And I call this Sakura. So, cause it has a little flower motif on the shoulder and then down here and then down here too. So it's just a really comfortable piece and you can belt it if you want to belt it. But to be honest, I don't think any of us want to wear belts right now. <laughs> <laughs> then you're getting all the love really here on the, on the chat room. <laughs> saying, I rely on Jenny Fong for my sense of fun during the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> the color is gorgeous, the fuchsia. And actually, there was a question. What is the dye that creates that fuchsia? This one, um, yeah. this is called LAC, L-A-C. And okay. so this, yeah, this is a dye that I get online. Um, it's actually a little bug and um, it's the um, origin of shellac. So um, yeah, it's basically really, really gorgeous. Uh, I do all the dyeing in my backyard studio outside. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Jenny, in terms of like, yeah, I'm, I'm just really fascinated in when and where you came into, you know, your the you know your your interest in dyes and in and, and your whole approach um yeah i mean that's just next level like chemistry going on there <laughs> botanicals <laughs> and how how and where did you stumble into that yeah can you tell us that story sure um so yeah a friend of mine calls it alchemy it really is kind of alchemy if you think about it because i've got these huge vats in the back and everything um but i came into it because i'm a fashion designer by training so i start with sketching first i'm all you know i love great fabrics. So my whole line is all about great fabrics. Um, and I basically um, started indigo dyeing when I actually mistakenly spilled coffee on a white dress. <clears throat> and then I had to over dye it. I just wanted to keep wearing it. So um, I learned how I taught myself shibori through looking at some books. Um, I actually attended a shibori workshop with Yoshiko Wada, which was really awesome. Um, and yeah, just, you know, now, um, after work with Indigo for a while, I'm really pushing into these other new colors and I'm super excited about it. Thank you. It's absolutely stunning. Thanks. And this one, this is a, um, shawl that I call blue wave. So it's basically a, a nice, really pretty kind of wave pattern that's on the, um, corners. I can put that on. <clears throat> But yeah, I, so the thing about my collection is I really love pieces that um, you can wear multiple different ways. I think it's important to be able to, you know, style things, um, have fun with one piece, and it's kind of all about fewer better. So having just like one really beautiful piece or a few really beautiful pieces that you can get a lot of mileage out of. So it's definitely anti-fast fashion, very slow fashion. <laughs> yeah, um, we so haven't... We have another question about, um, and I, I hope I'm not I'm saying this right, but Ami, Ami Gray is asking, what mordant do you use with lac? Um, let's see. Well, it actually matters more what the base is. So if you're using, if you're working with cotton or linen, it's cellulose. So I use an alum mordant. Um, if you work with proteins, then it's alum, it's, um, alum sulfate that I use. So, um, I was able to extract this kind of very heavy color also because um, I use calcium chalk um, as I'm extracting the dye first. So it's important with lac to extract the dye for about 45 minutes with calcium and then dye the fabric. 
to extract the dye and then strain it and then use, use the dye. Wow, that's a, pro that's a process for sure, huh? It is, yeah. It's about, you know, I mean, I touch the piece at least five or six times before I'm actually finishing it. So when I'm actually Can finally ironing it, it's kind of like I've hit the finish line. <laughs> Jenny, we're just trying, you know, I mean, it's amazing, right? And you're, you've been speaking a little bit to this idea of, um, you know, how to make and the shift that we have to deal with. And as all these pandemics are coming to add us together at the same time, right? Because it hasn't been, it's just first was the stay at home and this health pandemic. And then we've got social unrest and injustices. And now we're dealing with this great environmental catastrophe in a sense. Um, I mean, have you, has your own practice changed? I mean, it, it, have you, have you, what have you been, you know, in COVID and how, what have you been thinking about? I mean, is it harder to come up with a mood? Because one of the things we're finding is it's hard to predict what's ahead, right? And what does the next yeah. season look like? Um, yeah, right. if you could speak to that, maybe. Sure. Well, you know, it's, First of all, when we're, we're in March, right, it, we were nothing was certain at all. And um, it was a lot of fear, obviously. But then, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia. So for just the way life was beforehand. So um, one of the collections I did in the summertime was called um, Desert Road Trip. And so that's where these colors came in. It's because it's kind of like, what is the mood? What am I feeling? You know, nostalgia. I remember going on a car trip with my, with my family, you know, so, um, and then I try to imbue um, beauty into whatever mood I've got. So, um, you know, the, that was summer. And now I'm feeling like we just, we will go into fall and winter. We're going to need to be cheered up. So that's why I feel like we, I really want to continue with the indigo, you know, in my collection because it's my cornerstone, but um, that's why I'm pushing into these really bright, beautiful colors that have I mean, I would call this the solid because there's no shibori technique, but the fact that, you know, it has so many different colors in there and, you know, just the gradient, I guess, um, different hues, it's, uh, it's very interesting and very exciting to me. And, you know, if I wear this, I'm just going to be a happier person because <laughs> of the color. Um, you know, and that's, I guess that's the part of natural dyes is the the botanical part of it, the natural part of it, is there's a lusciousness that happens that just sinks into the fabric in different um, different levels. So it just becomes a piece of art that you're looking at and wearing. That is a great question. We're getting one from Sharon here. The combination of science and creativity and working with the serendipitous is fascinating. It truly is. I'm channeling that, Sharon, right now. Like Thank that's, you. that's exactly where we're at. And how do you how do you control the design? I mean. This has a lot to be said too about like, yeah, on, you know, just on, just on making decisions, you've kind of mentioned that, but how do you control the design? Um, well, what I love about Chibori is that you can start with an idea of like, I want to control this design. I want it to be a certain way in my mind. Um, there will be happy accidents, many of them, um, but there's kind of a freeing meditative way of working with Chibori where, you know, you have to just let go at some point, you know, you can um, stitch, you can pleat, you can tie, you know, different pieces of shibori. Um, and it may not come out exactly the way you were envisioning, but then it may take you, that may take you down a different path. And you may have like four different other ideas that you want to pursue. So that's what I really love about shibori itself is that it's just a, it's a meditative way, um, art form. And it's also very free flowing too. I think a lot of small, you know, small craft entrepreneurs, I mean, this has been the skill set that we've, we, we, we came from. And this is what we're able to offer in this time. And that's part of our resilience, you know, the letting go, the, you know, on, on how we make decisions and understanding yeah. this business, you know, the small business, the power and the attribution of that. And can you maybe mention too, and how do you, um, I think we're all feeling this too, even in these calls, we, we joke that it's day number seven of craft week. And in this world of being online and the, the fatigue, do you, do you experience how fatigue in your, in your practice? practice um, any differently than you did prior to the pandemic or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I remember this day in March where I was like, okay, I'm locked down. So I go back to my studio and I open the door. I'm look, staring at all this fabric going, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, what, how will I pivot? And so it became like a lot of people making masks. But then after that, it's sort of like, 
you know, yes, how are we going to, how are we going to survive? How are we going to keep our, you know, how are we going to create texture and differences in days, you know? And I think what it is, is for me is um, really just going back to that Jack Dorsey schedule almost, you know, just basically, I know on Mondays I'm working on product. So in my mind, I can, during the week, like think about, you know, mood boards and pull down product ideas, but I don't work on it until that Monday. And then, you know, for the next other two days, maybe I'm filling orders. So it creates some difference, some texture in my week. And I think the sameness is the, the part we need to fight, you know? So it's, it's all about um, creativity, being resilient, adapting to certain changes, and also really tapping into what makes me happy as a human being. You know, I like texture. I like to know, you know, that uh, Tuesday is my most productive day. I like to know that Saturday is coming and I can kick back. So I try to create more of that texture in my daily week. I think it's really helping. That's fantastic. You've, you've, you've totally inspired me and I forgot to call this out, but literally I just purchased my a mask from you. Um, you have a, oh. <laughs> a mask collection, which is great. I mean, that was like a very big, big wake up call for, I think the craft community and especially in the fibers and textiles is this massive shift mm -hmm. in this pivot to a whole other, whole other um, direction, you know, and, and yeah. just in this idea of like handmade masks, it's lovely to see the creativity that's coming out of that. And yours are absolutely gorgeous and they're actually on the site at the Craft Week site. So if anybody's interested, there's my plug. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Can you talk um, about yeah. that pivot though? Yeah, and how you did that, the quantity and what that's done for your practice? The, of the masks, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the the, um, yeah, I actually had kind of um, PTSD from it. <laughs> I had so many orders at one point. Um, my husband knows about this. I had so many orders at one point that in April um, that I looked at my Shopify and it said 175 to fill. <laughs> and I was sewing. And as I was sewing, I kept getting ching, ching. And I was like, oh my God, I'm turning this off. <laughs> so I, you know, I turned it off. I got caught up. Um, my masks are now in China, France, and New Zealand, which is really exciting. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's definitely something I want to continue to offer, but it's definitely I don't want it to be my my core baseline because, you know, I'm I'm the one here making all of them, which and I definitely still love to do it, but um I'm, you know, I I'm more about the clothes. <laughs> it's become an essential accessory though. Jenny, yeah. do you have any assistance or people helping you make any of your work or is it just you? It's just me. Um, you know, actually before COVID, I was uh, planning out my year. I had this huge calendar, January through December, and I was going to hire, um, I was making moves to hire a part-time production assistant. And um, since everything happened, you know, it's now back to me. And, uh, you know, um, I guess the, the silver lining I can say is that since I've been home, I have been able to do this, this mood board. I can show you guys again, if you want to see it. Um, and it's a treat for me because I've not had a chance to actually um, do something like this and actually really take the piece, take the inspiration and pull it directly into my collection. So, um, you know, this is just, it's really, it's really been exciting. Um, and so now I've got this blank wall right over there and that's gonna be the next mood board. So, yeah. Um, I think someone else had asked about Shibori and why I like Shibori. And I was thinking about it. Um, as an art form, it's really exuberant. So you can come up with exuberant designs and also minimalist designs as well. And each type of Shibori um, technique, stitching or pleating or um, you know, tying and dyeing and binding, it all has like each segment has such different personalities that um, you know, I love to explore, explore those quite a bit. That's terrific. I really, really, this has been fun to even see the mood board, right? Like I just love getting in the artist spaces and I know we can't do that always at the shows, right? So it's been, been great to see the studio. I know we internally at the Craft Council are exploring a new series in the, the American Craft, the publication that we offer and, and going into spaces and, 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 and creative spaces that artists live and work and breathe in. And this has just been a super treat. Um, does anybody else have a question right now for Jenny or would you like to, you know, feel free again if you want to take yourself, um, bring yourself into the conversation if you're in the room right now. Um, otherwise, again, you can continue to 
to post your comments here. I love this. The masks are really comfortable and I can't wait to wait to get a sense for that myself, Jenny. I just got, I just got a khaki one. I'm being distracted as we're talking here. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, one thing I will say is that uh, being home and knowing that all my other artists and friends are home as well. Um, we've actually here locally in the Bay area banded together to create um, something called Crafts Gives Back, an auction for justice. So um, it's about 10 plus designers. And um, my friend Maria, who is from MGG Studio, um, who's an ATC artist, she's over in Oakland. I'm in Berkeley. And we were just talking um, after you know George Floyd was happening about how we can give back. And um, we came up with the idea of Crafts Gives Back. And we want to amplify um, BIPOC artists uh, work here locally, and then also raise money for um, Planting Justice, which is an Oakland permaculture garden. So Planting Justice you know, grows fruits and veggies and they create boxes of food for low-income families. And um, we're just really excited to raise some money. Um, we've got some great donations that people can bid on and the bidding will take place on Instagram. So you just go to the handle at Craft Gives Back and you'll start to see um, some of the artists that we're amplifying and you're going to start to see this week some of the, um, the really cool products that you can, you can bid on. So we'll, we'll hope to raise a bunch of money, but we'll see. Jenny, can you give us the, the handle again? Sure. It's at Craft Gives Back. Thank you. I mean, I really appreciate that. You know, the council is has really um, continued to focus on, you know, part of our work is bringing these creative and diverse um, craft communities together through projects like this, right? Um, it's amazing to be able to now connect people from the East Coast, the West Coast, Midwest, um, all around doing this, doing our work this way. So that's part of it. And then we're also really excited about um, demonstrating ways that craft impacts contemporary American life. And again, both with the way the craft community stepped up in the PPE, and then I think now looking at um, addressing the social injustices across the country, there's so much potential there. And I really want to thank and applaud you for putting that together. Um, there's a number of, um, uh, uh, you know, the uh, groups that have been um, rallying around this effort that are connected to ACC. And as a national organization, it's sometimes it's, 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 it's great to see these grassroots initiatives like this, like artists bonding together and giving back to the community. We also did one, um, there was a small group in Atlanta that did um, craft kits that were distributed to over 400 um, of families that were sort of stuck at home throughout summer who had disproportionate access to um, ongoing learning opportunities. And there was a number of craft artists that put together artists craft based projects into these kits and were delivered. So I really am excited to follow that and um, we'll go ahead and get that posted out there. So thank Yay, you. Awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I think an initiative like this probably wouldn't have happened if we weren't all home. So that's kind of one of those silver linings of the pandemic. It's, it's like, yeah, definitely. I miss everybody. I miss seeing everybody in person for sure. But then also, you know, what are, what are the positive things? What can we pull from this? You know, I'm a creative person. I, I think outside the box as my norm. So, you know, how can we, how can we give back? Yeah, it was, we're really excited. <laughs> it's next weekend. Did you say that part of that work goes to planting justice as well? Yes. So a hundred percent of all donate proceeds will go to planting justice. So all the artists are um, donating pieces. I'm donating a, um, donating one of these. So this is a $160 value. It's a linen scarf. And, um, Let's see, my friend Maria is donating some jewelry and we've got apothecary in there. We've got home goods and these are all local artists who are making these things. Um, and so, yeah, just go to Craft Kids back and check it out. But we hope to raise a lot of money for planting justice. And like I said, 100% of the proceeds are going to planting justice. Thank you, Jenny. Really, really appreciate it. Well, that's that's definitely the power of craft. Lindsay, I don't know, are you seeing some other calls, ideas, topics, or questions that you want to address before we, we jump ship here? Yeah, um, Tamara has a question, and I don't know if I'll say this right, Jenny, so I apologize. <laughs> Do you use um, cochineal at all? Is that how you um, I, that's kind of how I say it. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, let's see, I haven't gone down that path yet. Um, lac, so cochineal is a bug and you get it, you know, in the bug form or powdered, just ground up. Um, 
I don't have anything against it. I just haven't gotten down that path. Um, lack is actually another bug that gets kind of a, a deeper fuchsia color and not quite so pink. Um, I think they're both beautiful. Nice. Um, and then we also had a, another um, comment actually of, about um, the community, giving back to the community from Ma Mary Yeager. And she said, it's so smart that you have joined forces with your artist friends and are giving back to the community. Thanks for your compassion and caring. Oh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only other question I think we haven't really um, addressed, and I think it goes back to how you, when you started first with Shibori, but Someone had a question um, that they submitted uh, in advance and they were asking what your biggest lessons were in your first year of working in Shibori. My what lessons? Just your biggest lessons. Like Big, what oh, were some lessons, lessons? yeah. Probably oh, the biggest um, things you picked over, right, Jenny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that first year coming all, on as a practitioner. Yeah, all of it. Well, I would say um, that, you know, when, when you fail, just learn from it and keep going. And if you, you know, as a dyer, if you dye something and, you know, it looks like a massive mistake, I would freak out sometimes when I had a couple spots on something or the color had shifted, just keep those because you never know when your mistakes will become something that will inspire you later. You know, um, there have been other times where I've actually, you know, thrown a swatch away or thrown something out and then, you know, later on just been like, oh my God, wait, where is that thing? Um, so biggest lesson, you're going to make mistakes. It's okay. Keep everything. Um, the other lesson, take notes, use your phone and take visual notes and write down everything that you're doing as you're dying stuff. Um, yeah. And then I guess my other big thing was, uh, my big test was to find the right shows to go to and the right customers who really appreciate and understand your artistry. And I found you guys. So um, yeah, this has definitely been you know, you guys definitely have my market and you understand my craft and you guys have been super, super supportive. And, and you guys are pivoting like call. crazy. Mm, yes, we're <laughs> trying our best. Jenny, it is, yeah, it's, it's terrific. It is. It's like, it's amazing to be able to find that audience. And I appreciate everybody on this call who's being able to join us, Jenny, and, and you putting it through your channels. And I think that's the, that, that's sort of that healthy ecosystem that makes all of this tick, right? It's like, definitely. how do, how do we support? each other um, across the whole ecosystem of making and, and you're doing it so we we really appreciate your time and your effort so um without further ado then now uh, we will we will probably wrap our session here jenny unless there's anything else any parting words you want to leave with us um i will thank everybody again for coming on to the call you can feel free to um, find jenny's collection the link is posted in the chat room before that disappears um, the site is still open and I think you could shop right up till, well, probably 1159 tonight, you know, Pacific time. So <laughs> give yourself a little extra if you're over on the East Coast. But uh, yeah, no, it's been a pleasure. It really has. These maker meetups have been special and I really appreciate your effort to bring us into this collection and look ahead a little bit. Look yeah. ahead. You got me excited. So everybody, Yay. thank you so much, Jenny. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. Yay, thanks. <laughs> it was great. It's so I love what seeing your mood board. That's so exciting, and thank everything, you. and all the products. Thanks, <laughs> Lindsay, for helping put this together. Really appreciate that, everybody. Cheerio. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.